Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rikimi Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the GeForce GTX 11 or GTX 20 series. The first rumor we'll begin with concerns the cooler design for the next generation of GPUs. According to the website Benchlife, they allege that the next generation of GeForce cards will indeed feature a dual fan design as opposed to the current reference design, which of course just features a single fan. I'm not 100% convinced, honestly, of the validity of this particular leak. NVIDIA have not used uh, more than a single fan in their reference design for years now. It has, of course, the negative impact of increasing the noise. It's possible that NVIDIA's uh, new cards could put out a lot of heat, and therefore they feel that this is the best design, or it's possible that they feel that they've managed to mitigate the noise an awful lot, so therefore they don't feel that this is the problem, but I'm still not particularly convinced by this rumour, at least in my opinion. A more interesting rumour to me is from Galax, and I say rumour, but it's actually uh, an official quote from a representative of Galax at the event of China Joy. The release time of the next generation NVIDIA graphics card will not be far away. Players will be able to see the information about the new graphics card in September. The performance will certainly be breakthrough growth and will support the advanced NVIDIA ray tracing technology. Game player is good news. And then they've also said that they're going to be releasing their own specific versions, for example, the Hall of Fame and Gamer and so on and so on. It is machine translation, so there is a little bit of roughness there, but... Still, the most important things we can hear is that we should be hearing about the cards at the latest in September. Personally, I think that we probably could hear about them sooner than that. I, I still think Gamescom is going to be the event that most of this stuff happens. And then, once again, the performance is going to be breakthrough. What does breakthrough mean? <laughs> I mean, what would you consider a breakthrough? And then, you know, if several people in the comments mention what they would consider breakthrough, then you can kind of get what I mean by breakthrough, as in it's just a range. Like, breakthrough to me is like at least 50 to 100% increase in performance from generation to generation. And I think that's a pretty safe bet. I don't think that they're going to replace the uh, 1080 with, let's say, the 2080, but then only have like 10% improvement in performance because it, yeah, it would just be absolutely ludicrous and no one, of course, would buy it. So in my opinion, at the very least, uh, breakthrough means 50% plus. However, the fact is that they have confirmed that it will support RTX technology. And that, to me, uh, is just extra fuel on the fire. And really, have really been pushing RTX and ray tracing. Uh, of course, we just saw that paper on temporal anti-aliasing. So for the company to be really embracing that for the next gener generation of GeForce cards wouldn't be too surprising to me. We also see NVIDIA trademark the name of Turing. Now, this is kind of confusing for a couple of reasons, because if it is Turing, that does make an awful lot of sense. After all, we have heard Turing was a possible code name for a long time, along with the name of Ampere, and these were, at least in theory, derivatives of Volta. Of course, there's always a spanner in the works, and earlier this month, we heard for uh, a rumour concerning Manly Technologies, who also perform, uh, produce uh, GeForce graphics cards. And there was various EEC uh, entries where we saw GA, which of course would mean it was Ampere. They, however, did deny that, so it's possible that these were troll entries or someone's kind of screwed up in the company or put these filings in just in the off chance because they were waiting for NVIDIA to finalise the name or something entirely different. Or, of course, it could be that we do see different lineups of cards. For example, the Titans could be Turing-based, and Ampere could be the gaming variants, or perhaps one of them is Quadro, or perhaps it's an entirely different series uh, in and of itself. We just don't know 100% yet. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if we did see both Turing and Ampere running simultaneously with some subtle differences between the two. Another YouTuber by the name of Adore.TV was sent over a whole bunch of information by someone who claims to be an insider slash works at NVIDIA. Now, I'm going to go through the information first and then go through my opinion. So according to the information that's been provided, both the RTX 2080, I'll get into that in just a second, and the Titan RTX will launch in August. Then we'll see 
a September release for the 2070, and November will see the release of both the 2060 and 2050. So going into the performance side of things first, the Titan will be 15% faster than the Titan V, or 50% faster than the 1080. Uh, we will see the uh, 2080 being 8% faster than the TI, or 50% faster than the GTX uh, 1080. And then finally, just for now, the uh, 2070 will be 17% faster than the, than the 1080, but 40% faster than the 1070. And we can also see the memory configurations, which is 8 gigabytes of memory uh, GDDR6, unsurprisingly, for the 2080, and 7 gigabytes of memory uh, GDDR6 for the uh, 2070. But there will be a numerous things here which raise your eyebrows. The first, we also see a different core in both the 2080 and the 2070. So the TU-104 is found in the... The TU-104 is found in the 2080 and the TU-106 is found in the 2070. They have done it in the past, uh, back in the days of Kepler. We saw the GK104, which was for the 760 as well as the 770, but the 780 and above used the GK110. However, since then, NVIDIA, for example, with, let's say, oh, I don't know, Pascal, we see GP104 being used in both the 1070 and the 1080. It's possible NVIDIA could be going back in their ways here, particularly given the lack of competition from AMD. Uh, so it's, at least in theory, this would mean that the 2080 would be the lowest end skew using that GPU. So therefore, we could make the assumption that they could release other parts, for example, the 2080 Ti or Ti or whatever you want to call it, which would have additional CUDA cores active. So in theory, at least, they could possibly wring out a couple of additional uh, additional SKUs from each of these different GPUs. Once again, you'll see the Titan, the, te the 2080 and the 2070, all three of those cards have RTX, whereas the 2060 and below are known as GTX. So what does that imply? Well, it immediately tells us that there is a segregation there, assuming these rumors are correct, that the 2060 and below will not be capable, or at least won't be optimal, to run RTX technology. So there are three or four different theories you can go with. The first is that the cards are just quite literally incapable of running it in hardware. So for example, let's just say that they have tensor cores in the 2080 and the 2070. They will not be present in, let's say, the 2060. That's one possibility. Or it's possible that it can run it, but it's just so slow because, well, ray tracing takes an awful lot of grunt, NVIDIA don't feel that branding it like this is appropriate. I mean, technically it can do it, but it's just too slow. Another possibility is that the lower end SKUs, for example, the 2060 and, let's say, 2050, are essentially refreshes of Pascal or some other architecture. That's definitely a possibility. Um, we have heard some rumors from the website WCCF Tech that we would see uh, Pascal staying around, and after all, there are all of those uh, cores that NVIDIA might want to get rid of. I'm just not 100% convinced on that. I, it seems a bit suspicious for NVIDIA to do that, and honestly, I think that at this point, they probably would want to transition to an entirely new architecture. Um, in terms of branding, I mean, it kind of makes sense in one way, in that it really pushes you and says, oh, look, well, yeah, <laughs> anything prior to RTX is essentially obsolete. So it does kind of push you mentally to say, okay, well, it's probably a good idea to upgrade to this new technology. My only, the only caveat I have with that is that it, GTX is also synonymous with NVIDIA. In other words, it's a really good brand. So NVIDIA have that really down to pat right now. So would they be willing to give that up? Of course, GeForce is ultimately their brand, right? But most people would say GeForce GTX 
uh, and almost, to some people I know, GeForce and GTX, they will use them interchangeably. So some people would say, like, for example, the GTX 1080, others would say the GeForce 1080. So maybe NVIDIA would care about that, maybe they wouldn't, but it might also be worth them to simply say, well, okay, we need to draw a line in the sand somewhere. And another way to look at it is if you recall way back in the day, and we are going back quite a number of years now, you had NVIDIA Riva TNT, and then you had the TNT2, and they also had older cards before that, but I'm going to ignore those. And then you moved over to GeForce. So what was the separation there? Well, it was because they had hardware TNL, hardware triangle and lighting setup. So NVIDIA thought that that was a big breakthrough so it's possible that that could be the other theory here because NVIDIA feel that ray tracing is such a big part of modern day gaming that they want to almost commemorate that. They want it to be obvious that these cards are the cards which will really be able to run ray tracing in games. Of course, if you're cynical, you could also say that it also employs a lot of psychological warfare on their existing customers. Even if you've got, let's say, uh, two GTX 1080 ties in SLI, essentially speaking, you are still uh, behind in terms of the technology. Yes, your performance in frame rate. So, for example, let's say that you uh, have two GTX 1080s, or say two 1080 ties, and your buddy just happens to buy two 20s, 2080s. Well, yeah, your performance might only be 15 or 20 percent, possibly less if you've got a hefty overclock on your card. But so while your frame rates and let's say right of the Tomb Raider will be not that much different, Keely, you will be behind in the ability to run RTX technology. <laughs> of course, how much of an impact RTX technology really has, no one knows. We do know that some games developers have really been pushing ray tracing. And we know that it's going to be part of Gameworks. And NVIDIA are claiming that this is really going to help artists because ray tracing, uh, particularly with shadows and lighting and that type of thing, it will certainly help artists in the long run. But there is that transition period. And even if you don't count the segregation in the GPUs of this particular lineup, you've also got to take into consideration that there is a massive back catalogue of cards. Like... If you've just bought a GTX 1080 like three weeks ago, or you have a Vega 56 and your team red, which is fine, or you own a GTX 970 or whatever, you may not necessarily have either the funds right now to upgrade or possibly you're waiting for the next generation of cards or possibly you're just going to say, you know what, I don't want to buy the, the 2080. I want to see what AMD counter with or I want to go for the GTX 2080 tie. And all of those are fair enough reasons. So my point is that, yes, having these cards is certainly going to be a benefit. Yes, these cards are going to be able to you know, run RTX, but how much of a difference it makes and how soon, probably it remains to be seen. What's my opinion on this? Well, honestly, there is so much conflicting information right now. It makes it incredibly difficult. Yes, NVIDIA have certainly patented RTX. We know GeForce RTX has been patented as well as Quadro RTX, but that does not mean a smoking gun. That does not mean GeForce RTX is hardware. It could simply be SDKs. It could simply be NVIDIA have an SDK for the Quadros. It could be that NVIDIA have an SDK for GeForces. And that is what is going to be part of Gameworks. Or it could be nothing at all to do with Gameworks. And it could just be, I don't know, development software or something entirely different. No one really knows yet. Does that mean that I think... Uh, uh, Adore TV's source is incorrect. Honestly, no one really knows right now. The problem is there is so much conflicting information. And this is actually another small thing I forgot to mention in uh, another video just a few days ago. If you actually look at the uh, supposed GTX um, 2080 board diagram, that, sorry, the PCB that got leaked, not only are, are the power connectors different to what we saw uh, from colorful, but also the uh, SLI fingers, <laughs> well, they're totally different as well. So 
yeah, basically my point is that it's possible we could be looking at completely different cards. It's possible that NVIDIA uh, have just put out a lot of troll information, a lot of troll leaks to just throw people off. But my personal opinion is that we will be seeing these cards pretty soon. How much do they cost? I personally think we're going to be looking at GTX uh, 1080 pricing. But of course, all we can do is just wait and see. And now we're going to be discussing a really cool feature from Windows 10 Enterprise, which is known as In Private Desktop. This is really cool because it is essentially a sandbox version of a virtual machine. And this allows you to run applications and do things that won't necessarily... Uh... Now this will allow you to run untrusted application in a sandbox without the application being able to make changes to critical system files. So in short, if you're still testing things out and you're like, well, okay, this uh, file.exe looks a bit suspicious. Do I really want to test this in a mission critical system? Well, now you can, and uh, it sounds pretty darn cool. In private desktop preview provides admins a way to launch throwaway sandbox for secure one-time execution of untrusted software. This is basically an inbox speedy virtual machine that is recycled when you close the app. I do wish this feature was available for home users as well, because I do feel this is a very cool feature for a lot of users. Um, it's not necessarily something that, sure, everyone would benefit from, because I'm certain a lot of folks would just be like, ah, I'm sure it's fine, just click go. But for more savvy users who don't necessarily uh, trust a certain application, I think it would be kind of nice to be able to do that. Of course, some people will still use virtual machines anyway, and that's fine. But still, it's nice to just be able to do this, just to be able to right-click or just however it's run. And in my opinion, it would be a really cool feature for Microsoft to roll out further. Before I let you all go, I just want to let you know that uh, two of the winners for the MSI CPU competition have been selected, so you can find details on screen. And furthermore... Uh, there are still, of course, processes to be won. So if you want more information regarding the competition, well, by golly gosh, you can find that information fa uh, in the, the video description. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.